Florida, and you're young. You're really young. You're a young man. So that makes me feel better. That it makes me feel good. But God is. He's with us with every every season, every season of your life. And so, uh, boy, I'm just excited about young people. We got some kids here today, and and they're going to be blessed too downstairs with Austin ministering. But wherever we're at, when we can start early with the Lord, it's to, it's to our advantage. When we can start young, but if you haven't started, wherever you start, as long as you started, that's what makes, that's what counts. As long as you start with the Lord. And so, Paul, Paul, the apostle Paul, was not always a nice guy. We know that. Scripture talks about that. He was, didn't, he didn't always have things right. When he thought he was doing God a service, he was actually going against the will of God. But thanks be to Jesus who changed his life. Amen. It's never too late for someone to get saved. It's never too late for someone to come to Christ. Thanks be to Jesus. I'm so glad for his grace today. We don't deserve it, do we? But we, we receive it because of God's mercy and God's grace. And so... Wherever you're at in your season of life, God is there to work on your behalf. He's going to take care of you until the end. And he's he's called us to trust him and to believe on him. So Paul, after he was converted, he got got the calling from the Lord. And he had started several churches, and they were churches that he would raise up leaders, and then he would go on. Paul was a church planner. Paul was a, an apostle that when he was a shaker, he was a mover. He was not afraid to die for Christ. And so he was on his way. Now he was, uh, he was arrested. Now he, he was going to get to go to Rome. And, but something happened. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, in the book of Romans is where we're at today, chapter 5. Paul is, is, has written a lot of things in Romans. Some of it's hard to understand. Some, somewhere I think Peter said that uh, even Paul was hard to understand at times. And so, but we, we take what we can and ha- ask the Holy Spirit to help us apply the Word of God. There's one thing to know the Word of God, but another thing to, to live it out, right? To put it, how do we put it in our everyday life? So that's, that's the practical side of God. He wants us to be doers of his word. No, I'm really hearers. Whenever I read chapter 5 of Romans, I get encouraged. But I think so often this is where we're at. And so we'll call this message stand, Standing Firm. Sometimes God just asks us to stand firm. Not be retaliating, lashing out, trying to get envy, but to just stand firm in the Lord. Be confident, be trust God. Battle belongs to him. So therefore, having been justified by faith, verse 1, chapter 5 of Romans, therefore, having been justified, what in the world does justification mean anyway? If anyone would ask, ask you that question, I don't know what I would have said if I, would have, I hadn't heard it this way. But justification, someone said it this way, just as if you never sinned. How can that be possible? That's not possible in ourself. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, all have missed the mark. We can never be good enough. We can never try to appease the Lord by our good works. It'll never happen. But thanks be to Jesus, who becomes our justifier. Because we read here, we are justified by faith. What is faith? Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he did for you and I on the cross and in the resurrection, there is a great victory that you and I receive. That is victory over sin. That is to be made completely, completely in right standing before God. Now, 
All of us are born into this life with the same problem. You know what that is. We are born in sin. We are born because of Adam's sin. Therefore, the whole race has the same problem. But good news is the gospel. There's good news for you and I. When we feel like we don't measure up, even as a Christian, sometimes we feel like we don't measure up, right? We feel like we missed the mark. And not so often we do. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if you confess your sins, if you're honest before the Lord, talk to the Lord about what's going on in your heart. Be completely honest. By the way, he knows every, every heart here today. He knows every thought. He knows every circumstance. Yet he wants us to talk to him about it. There's a promise in verse 1 that we have peace. I can't put a price tag on peace. Amen? You can't. No, nothing in this world will satisfy the longing that's in our heart for peace. Now, peace, when I say peace here, I believe it's referring to the peace that comes because our heart is made right before God. The peace that you and I have because we are not trying to live a life one way and do another thing, say this, and then live another way this way. But we have peace with God because we are in right standing. Because remember, He is Lord. Some of you guys may remember when we used to sing the chorus, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Remember that? And then we used to sing another one. He is all my righteousness. I stand complete, I stand complete in him and worship him. Remember that one? He is all my righteousness. I stand complete and worship him. Something like that. Yeah. You don't remember those, Stephanie? That's probably because you're, you're not old enough. But we used to sing these back when I was young. But there was something here that stuck with me. He is all my righteousness. What is it about human nature that wants to sort of earn its way to salvation? No, let's not, let's get it right. God wants us to live in such a way. But how can I live in such a way that will not muddle or interfere with God himself? You see, I've got to get it straight. I have to come before the Lord and say, here I am, be merciful to me, a sinner. Will you save me? Will you take away my sins? I acknowledge my need for you. And then all of a sudden, yes, now he can move in. And my life is transformed because Jesus is living inside of me. What would happen if people all around the world would get that message? You would have more peace, wouldn't you? You would have people seeing eye to eye. You would have more people understanding truth. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm so glad that he doesn't come, he does not come to condemn us. He came into this world to set us free. By the word of Isaiah, the captive is set free. Captive from what? Captive from the enemy. Captive held by the enemy to do his work. And so we remember 
that we are to stand complete. We stand complete. On Judgment Day, we stand in Jesus. We stand, we're going to stand because Jesus is standing with us. He, he would say, I believe, he wants to say he is, he is one of mine. She's one of mine. She walks with me. and God knows their heart. But then there will be the question as we read on here. Why do Christians go through tribulation? Why do believers have to suffer hardship? Why do people who have served God all their life sometimes end up with crippling diseases or whatever may be the list? The list goes on. Why, why, why? May I only say this? I don't know all the answers, but I do know that we live in a fallen world. And I do know that because of sin, because sin has entered into the race of mankind, we are suffering the consequences of sin. God never intended for us to be sick in the origin, original creation. He never intended for us to have to deal with sin. And Jesus also had to taste this life for us. He had to taste it. Sometimes it was bitter. And you know the story. Sometimes he was spit upon, but that wasn't bad. That was hardly anything. But when they beat him merely to death and he scorched him with the whips, and then the whips had thongs and metal things, bones sharp, they would tear the flesh. It would not merely leave a welt, but it would shred the flesh. Sounds terrible. Jesus merely bled to death before he got to the cross. No wonder they pushed someone in to help him carry the cross. But Jesus went it all, all the way for you and I because he had us on his mind. I believe that with all my heart. He could see beyond. He could see beyond all, all the time. He could see the future that those young people, those elderly folks, those people in faraway places will come to know him and be in his heaven who for the joy set before him endured the cross. See, what will help us in this life is if we remember the cross. And Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, there's a cross to pick up. There's a price that we pay. This is not a cheap grace, as some may say it is. Cheap grace means something like this. Well, I've sinned today. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I'll just go on now. It's done. Over. I'll go do something else. Oh, whoops. I sinned. Well, you know, it was kind of a potential. That kind of cheapens the grace of God. Oh, Lord, help us to live with an attitude of, Lord, I've sinned against you. I've, I've grieved the Holy Spirit. And Lord, even things that are right to do, Lord, forgive me. Change my heart. Change me. The psalmist prayed that. David, when he prayed, he was in anguish over sin, when he finally admitted to his adulterous affair. Then he prayed, we read it in Psalms 51, I believe it is, that he says, create in me a clean heart. Create in me, Lord, a right standing. See, he felt the distance. Sin separated him from his God. The, the, the relationship was was broken, was, was, was hindered, but until he confessed, the Lord came and changed us. Then I will teach sinners their ways. For the Lord is good to us. And that's next verse 3. Is, I mentioned tribulations. Let's read it. Romans 5, 3. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations. What is you what are you what do you mean exalt in your tribulation? Knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Wow, what a word that is. Wow. Lord, how long? How long? The perseverance leads to character, proven character. 
Now just to lighten the mood, just to lighten the mood a bit. I had a brother who had some experiences with some trials, and he just kind of said it one day. Yeah, he says, they tell us trials make character or build character. But he says, I think it's just making a character out of me. That was supposed to be a joke. Okay. Kind of lightened up the mood. I've seen a couple smiles, so we're okay. But what Paul means by this is he can, he can expect tribulation. The fact of the matter is, in the book of Acts, they were excited. They got persecuted. What? They were overjoyed that they were beaten. They were considered worthy to be beaten for the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but that's that's kind of seems a little odd. But when we think about it, it tells us what was in their heart. That their goal in this life, their calling, it was not up to them. It was not up to their ability but it was up to the Lord's ability to do what he wants to do in spite of the mishap and circumstance and weakness and setbacks and on and on it can go because we want to stand firm even if it costs us trial, even if it's hard going, even when the ground is hard to plow, even when the roots are hard to remove, Persevere and not give up. I remember the time we had a frozen water line, a sewer line, rather, a few winters back, and I got to thinking, I'll bring a water tub, I'll bring a barrel of water, I'll torch the water, I'll get a circulating pump, and I did, and I got it, got it all set up, and I worked all day, most of the day. It was getting late, later into the evening. I had made progress. It was froze about halfway down the church to the sewer over here. And I got pushing and kept going, and finally I stretched it out. You know, I'm this, I'm this far away from the end. It hasn't broke, and I was getting tired. And then all of a sudden, as I was beginning to quit and pull my stuff out, I heard this whoosh. I heard this water running. And a thought came to me. Oh, my goodness. Isn't this true, Lord? We give up just before, just a little bit too soon. We threw our hands up, and we were so close to the breakthrough. We were just that close. Could we be encouragers to one another? Yes, I know sometimes we pray the same prayer. We pray that we pray for the same people. We pray and we pray, and we wonder, Lord, what's it going to take? But keep on the Lord doesn't tell us to quit, does he? He doesn't say that's, uh, you know, pray as long as you feel like it. He says pray and keep praying and persevere in prayer. And it will help you develop. See, I'm convinced sometimes God is more interested in changing you as the prayer, prayer, as, you're, as he's interested in answering your prayer. Does that make sense to you? He's interested in cultivating, nurturing your prayer life, your relationship with him, so that you can endure, your endurance level begins to rise and become stronger. How many know no pain, no gain? You've heard that saying. I don't like pain. Do you like pain? I don't think anyone likes pain. But as we take as much as we can with the Lord's help. And I believe God is faithful who will not give us more than we can handle. And that thing, that verse is like, okay, Lord, how much do you think I can handle here? Have you ever had days when it rains, you say it pours? And if anything can go wrong, it will. You've had a couple of those days lately. But then the storms pass, the clouds pass. 
And you say, Lord, you've helped me again. Lord, you've met me again. Lord, you forgive me for what I begin to doubt. Forgive me when I begin to take my eyes off you and begin to measure my life with my abilities rather than God's abilities. Stand firm. Sounds very similar. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, when Paul was talking in another place about this battle that is taking place in the spirit, he says, stand firm. Therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What is it that all about? This is the armor of God that God gives to us through Jesus. And truth, the truth is his word, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, the fiery darts of the enemy cannot penetrate if we put on the breastplate of righteousness. He is with us in the heat of the battle. And how many want a victory? But we forget that we have to have a battle. Does that make sense? We want the victory, right? But we don't want the battle. I don't like the heat. I don't like the hardships. I don't like the setbacks. But sometimes God allows them to, to, to bring us to a new level with him. And Job's life, he was, and this is, comes to my heart, but Job was doing what was right. And we asked the question, why does God let things happen to people that are serving the Lord? Only by some ways to test, allows us to test, be tested. And may the Lord help us to stand in the hour of testing. Secondly, may the Lord help us to keep the hope, to be standing firm, and even if it costs us tribulation, even if it costs us our sense that people withdraw from you because of what you stand for. I know a lot of students that it's a lonely stretch sometimes in high school or on into college, sometimes a lonely stretch where people are trying to stand firm for the Lord. So we need to pray for our youth. We need to be praying for our young people, our kids that are coming up, that they will latch hold, that their hearts will become strong in the things of God. Hope is something that we all want. Hope, without hope, we become, this, we become a person that is going to sink. As a sinking, without hope, there's, you, you might as well quit before you start, right? Without hope, if you don't have hope, your vehicle's going to start. Oh, my goodness, that's not a good thing. If you don't have hope that the water is going to come out of the faucet when you, hey, I figured something out today or yesterday. Our, our water is very irony. And I'm thinking, wow, the, water, the well is drying up. But really, the well is a sand point that we haven't in every so many years. It's been a long time, 20 plus, that point should be changed. And so my brother was going to help me, and it all had it all figured out, and then we decided to scrap the plans and just wait another year. And I'm going, okay, sounds good to me. And I'm thinking, well, I wonder if I'm going to make it through the winter, because the water's coming out at a pencil size out of the faucet. And so you want a glass of water, you're going to sit there, and you've got to persevere, and you've got to think, okay, okay. So I got to thinking, I'm going to take the cover off the, the faucet. You know that little thing you screw on there, that screen? Sure enough, it was just all kind of filled up with irony stuff. And I shook that off, and pretty soon I just set it on the sill, and, and we're just going to let it rip. And so I have water, twice as much water right now. I said, hallelujah, we're going to make it through the winter. Hopefully the well won't dry up. Well, there are things in our life that happens. No one likes the storms. No one likes, no one likes being caught in a snowstorm. I remember coming back from Duluth, one of our child, I think it was a checkup. We had, we had a doctor in Duluth at the time. We were pastoring in Palisade and Unbelievably, the weather just 
set in. I mean, we couldn't see like six feet in front of our car as snow was coming down. And I think it was a little place in Cromwell. You guys know where that little spot is on the road. We found one motel that had a room. Sure enough, we, we, we stayed there overnight. On oh, the morning, there was a tanker laid over in the ditch. And we go, thank you, Lord, you helped us get out of the storm. Because God is good. I believe in prayer. I believe in his holy angels that will guard against us. I believe in the, the weapons of his that are his for us to use. That, 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 that covering is, gives us the hope, not that we should be foolish, but that we would have the mind of Jesus. One story comes to mind. Well, you remember Mary was grieving over her brother Lazarus, who had died, and Mary was just broken up. She was actually probably a little disgusted with Jesus because she asked him, if you would have been here, this wouldn't have happened. She, she, she began to cry and share her heart, and Jesus, he didn't make excuses. He just listened. And the scripture says, Jesus wept. In John's Gospel 11, 32, Therefore when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's almost like, it's your fault, Lord. Have you ever had people, or maybe you've even thought of yourself, well, God could have prevented this death. God could have stopped this. Why did God allow this? Right? And then it comes back to our faith. We live in a fallen world. It's in the heart of God to seek and to save. It's in the heart of God to touch people all over this world. And sometimes... Life sets in, storms come and go. The real purpose, the real reason that you and I have been given another day to live is to glorify him and to seek after him and to bring our children up in the Lord with the help of the Lord and to encourage others around us to look to Jesus. You see, when things get tough, human nature is more apt to look up toward the Lord. Not everyone, but typically humanity begins to turn to God when things really get tough. And I pray that we can be standing firm in the days that we live in right now. But many people are living in fear. Many people are living wondering what's going to happen in our future. What does the future hold? The scripture is clear to us, there will be a day of great tribulation. There will be a time of suffering. There will be a time that you don't want to be on this earth. But I'm believing that God will take us to a better place because it is in the heart of God to reconcile. And from hope, we go to reconciliation in this chapter. What does that mean? Reconciliation, because I was in, in opposition. I was an enemy without Christ. I was not able to save myself, and he who knew no sin became sin on the cross. He became sin. He mean he came. He took the sins of the people. He was never. He was, he never sinned, but he took the sin. He became the scapegoat. He became the sacrifice. And because his life was given for you and I, we have all. We have now been able to receive eternal life, a right relationship, right standing before God while we were yet sinners. This just kind of blows us away because we didn't know any better. 
Paul, at the time before his conversion, did not know any better. He thought he was serving God. And many people don't know any better. I remember when I was helping some project at the camp, we were pouring concrete, and one of the, one of the fellows that was there was referring to a, a, a helper that was there volunteering, and he was talking about this man, how God had saved him, and he, you know, he had given his heart to Jesus, but then he turns around and says, but God hasn't fixed his, his vocabulary yet. I thought, oh, wow, that's one way to look at it. But some things fall off quickly, but other things take longer. And other people have habits that, you know, just you got to stay. This is where perseverance, perseverance. Repeat. We fall down, we, we help encourage them up. I'm so glad he didn't kick me out. The first thing I did wrong. I would never make it. I need his grace. I can't live a live a life that I that I should without his grace. And so his his life was given for our life. He suffered many trials. He suffered many things. Isaiah said he was despised, forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. You see, you can tell anything to Jesus, and he knows all about it. He's been there. He's lived in your shoes. He knows what it feels to be lonely. He knows what it feels to be rejected. He knows what it feels like to, to have been misunderstood. And then he knows what it feels like to be abandoned. A lot of people that are in our world that are being abandoned. There's a lot of needs. But Jesus knows your heart. And when you feel lonely, he knows exactly how that feels. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Spoke that out of the depth, depths of his soul. But then we read in Hebrews 10, and read Hebrews 12, rather, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we had just went off a chapter of faith and talked about the heroes of the faith Abraham, Noah, all the big names, but there was a lot of people that weren't mentioned, were also persecuted. Their names are before God, and God knows. But then he reads in the Hebrews 12, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding, those witnesses are the previous chapter 11. But also, I believe we can apply to, you have had men and women in your life who have passed on to the Lord. I have men and women in my life who have passed on with Jesus. And they're a part of the witnesses surrounding us because of their life, because of everyone needs a role model in their life. Someone to say, you know what? I, I get encouraged to be around that person. So that Jesus goes on, as we read this verse, it says, lay aside every sin. Lay aside the, what entangles us. And let us run the race. In other words, get rid of the stuff that's dragging you down. If there's envy, if there's bitterness, for example, we've got to let it go so that we can run the race, fixing our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right. Now, what he says, he sat down at the right hand of God. It doesn't mean he's just sitting there. That means he's... He's in a place of honor. Jesus is in the, at the right hand of the Father because he's at the place of honor. But Jesus is active in heaven because he said, I will go and prepare a place for you. He's building a place for you and I. He's at work. I believe that heaven will be a place where we'll be all involved. 
to something in some way that we will never want to come back to this place again. But we will come back. The Bible says we will come back to this earth to reign with him, to rule with him. Things will be different. All the nature will be changed. Everything is going to be great. And others will be born during that time. That's a lot of things to understand. But try to keep it simple. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I am weak, but he is strong. They're simple, simple truths. Even when I don't feel like I'm good, he says, you're righteous to me. You're in right relationship with me. And so we stand firm. How do you know we're going to stand firm this week? How, are you, how do you know that? Because the word of God is your sword and the help of the Holy Spirit lives in you and you have others that love you. You have your family, you have your church family. We need to stand firm with each other. We need to lift each other in these days. We need to pray for the saints of God. We'll switch back to Mike's. End with this song that Emily taught me. The blessing speaks right out of out of the, uh, the scriptures about the blessing. Throughout the Old Testament, There's a couple of examples that talked about the blessing. Remember, Jacob stole the blessing from Esau. Remember that? There are others that they would pray before they passed from this life, pray that God's blessing would be upon them. I've learned some things about the blessing that you and I have the power through Jesus to bless people by speaking good words over them. Speak life through your tongue. So the, there's power in the tongue. There's life and death. You can destroy or you can build up. And so the Lord's desire for us is to be able to be a, like a child